So what do you do with your legs when you're doing pull-ups and chin-ups? You just not worry about them, forget about them. You know, pull-ups are just an arms and backs exer back exercise. Don't gotta worry about it. keep them relaxed, loose, floppy, whatever. Um, no, you want to integrate your legs into the movement because pull-ups and chin-ups are a full-body exercise. Yeah, they you know you want to get technical. They mostly work the arms and the back. Um, they're definitely an upper-body dominant exercise. But what you do with your legs. Um, I know it's hard to believe, but it does impact your performance. And if you figure out what to do with your legs, um, you're going to optimize your performance, which means down the road, you're going to be able to do more reps. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be able to do heavier weighted pull-ups or work up to more advanced um, pull-up skills. The, the better you get at um, calisthenics or any, any fitness or movement discipline, the more that the details matter. And so I'm a big believer in getting things right from the start so you don't have to fix things later. And so what you do with your legs is, you know, it's, it's not a major issue. It's kind of a minor detail of pull-up technique, but it's important. And you might get some results um, from integrating one of these changes into your technique. So there's two techniques that you can do, um, and it all depends on how much space you have. So if you've got a pull-up bar that you can hang from and without touching the floor, like I do here, I've got just a little bit of space beneath me, then the best technique by far for strength and conditioning purposes is to keep your legs straight, your knees locked and your toes pointed, and you're also going to contract your glutes and your thighs and, and kind of keep your legs together. And you're going to maintain all of that, the knee lock, the toe point, uh, keeping your legs and glutes tight throughout the full range of motion of the exercise. Um, so that's best case scenario. You're going to get the best results from that. So if you have the space, um, a high enough pull-up bar, do that. Um, if you don't have the space, maybe you have a lower pull-up bar or a door frame pull-up bar, or maybe you're just really tall and you can't hang um, without touching the floor, then you're going to have to bend your knees. And this is not an optimal position um, for strength and power generation, um, but doing pull-ups and chin-ups with your knees bent is a lot better than not doing any pull-ups and chin-ups at all. Um, so what you're going to focus on here is um, two things, mainly just contracting your, your thighs and your glutes, keeping your thighs together and maintaining that throughout the full range of motion. The other thing is that you're gonna, you want to also be a little bit more mindful of your, um, what your spine is doing. So you want to avoid um, arching your lower back because that takes your spine out of alignment and you're not going to get a really strong, complete core contraction from here as you are from here, which is a neutral length and spine. So I see a lot of, a lot of folks, um, they'll get ready for their pull-ups, they'll bend their knees, they'll cross their ankles, their legs will kind of spread, and then they'll arch their lower back. And that just takes your spine out of alignment and makes it uh, very difficult to get a full core contraction, if not impossible. Um, and so you want to avoid that. So how you avoid that is you um, tuck your tailbone slightly. So instead of reaching your butt back, you're going to tuck your tailbone slightly. Do that with a glute contraction and a very slight core contraction. You can think of it as kind of like a micro crunch, not really moving, but um, you're contracting in the same way. And you do that on the pull-up bar. So you get your pull-up bar, you bend your knees, you can either keep your, your ankles just next to each other, or you can cross your ankles. Again, you're gonna contract your, your glutes and your thighs, keep them tight, tighter is lighter. And um, then in combination with your core contraction, you're gonna power yourself up and make sure that you're not arching at your lower back. Um, so that's what you're gonna do um, with your legs when you're doing pull-ups and chin-ups, one or the other. Again, this is kind of a minor detail, not super um, important, um, but it will make a difference in terms of your results, especially down the road. And, and speaking of that, a lot of people will, they'll integrate, um, they'll adjust their technique to make it a little bit better, more optimal. And they'll say, hey, you know, I could do 20 pull-ups before, and now that I'm, you know, doing this thing with my legs, I can only do like eight or nine reps. What's, what's the deal? And I think the explanation for that is that there's a learning curve when you're learning a new skill or trying to do something a little differently than you always have, it's different and it puts your body in a different position. Just, I mean, just the subtle change of um, going from this uh, extended lower back to into alignment, that changes everything up the chain and it affects which muscles are activated and where they're activated because um, it's a new position, it's a new uh, movement pattern, new angle, if you will, um, for training. And so there might be a temporary um, decline in your, the number of reps you can do, but every single case I've seen, when somebody sticks with the best technique um, over a long enough period of time, they quickly surpass 
what their past performance was because they're training right from the start. And I'm a big believer in that. If you're going to train something, you might as well do it right from the start and don't make any of those mistakes because you're going to have to fix them down the road most of the time. So um, anyway, I talked way too long about this, what should be a very simple subject. So thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.